Hi, besties. Welcome back to the T-Swift Sisters podcast. We have a super exciting episode for you today. We are back with another segment of What's Up Taylor Swift, where we share fun and interesting news about Taylor Swift. And then we actually have our second guest on the show. I'm super excited. But we have Ricky, who is the pioneer of the Swifty Sweet Project, um, on with us today. And she's just going to be telling us a little bit about it and basically about how you have another opportunity to score tickets to see Taylor Swift this year at the Eras Tour. So I'm really excited about that. And that will be later in today's episode. But if everyone's ready, let's, let's get go. started. All right. So our first story today Taylor Swift lands the number one spot in the world's 10 highest paid entertainers of 2022, according to Forbes. So it's the sixth time that Taylor has actually made the cut. She received the number one spot in 2019. Funny enough, I feel like it would have been another year, but it was 2019, the year Lover was released, which I think I I was saying that I thought it would have been another year just because she didn't really tour that year. Mm -hmm. Um. Reputation tour ended in 2018 and then we had Lover in 2019. But she did, she was number one that year. So um this year Taylor made 92 million dollars combined um from physical record sales, streams of the albums, uh like Spotify, digital downloads, and licensing. And in 2023 this year she's obviously expected to do like mm-hmm. even bigger i wouldn't be surprised if taylor is going to be number one this year because era's tour um i have here it's 52 nights across the u.s so that's without mm-hmm. even international dates it, right taylor if you're listening our international <laughs> fans just want to know when the heck they're gonna please <laughs> give them a break oh my god So they're suspecting that it's going to be a nine figure payout from Mm -hmm. era's tour alone. And then obviously it's going to be more record sales. They've already sold. Hello. She's coming out with RSD spoiler alert, um, vinyls already like new stuff being sold this year. So I can't imagine that she won't just like rack in even more money. Wait. So question like when you said this year, that's 2022. Um, like this year she's made 92 million. So that's 2022. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like the fiscal yeah, yeah. year. Yes. The her fiscal fiscal year. year. So she's it's all those, it's all those anti-hero versions. Oh my Jesus. God. <laughs> that's it's why all I'm part thinking, like that 2023, she's definitely already going to make more because I'm like, okay, I've already purchased the lover live from Paris vinyl. Um, I'm going to be purchasing the mm-hmm. hopefully RSD. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say they come. Oh, hello. Any other TVs that come out? I was just yeah. going to say any other Taylor's versions that come out. And I feel like this year we're going to get multiple. Yeah, yeah so for sure. She's going to, so. she's actually going to take numbers one through 10 in <laughs> all the spots. Longer. The moral of the story is you're welcome, Taylor, for reaching the stats. <laughs> it was our hard work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I don't know if merch like goes toward this, but I know she's making heck of a lot of money off of merch from us three alone. <laughs> and those uh v- sneaky VIP packages. Oh my goodness. I can't with that. I was watching a video on TikTok today and it was like Taylor, like 20 something days before reputation tour started so reps uh tour actually started in glendale which is where um era's tour starting as well Mm -hmm. so um it was like 20 something days and she had the vip packages and she was like guys like these are gonna start going out soon uh so the way it works is like as you get closer to your show i'm gonna be sending out the vip packages which means that we won't freaking see our vip (gasps) package forever oh man and it'll only go to your house yeah, but I mean, I'll I'll just take it in my luggage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I won't well, get to for see you. the person. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be home in the summer, right? Yeah, at some point. Yeah, so hopefully I have a summer job now. I'll tell you later. Oh, oh. Um, but hopefully it like lines up, or I'll mail it to you. Sammy's down the street, so I'll just you know I'll make her come pick Love it up. 
Um, but yeah, so we won't be seeing ours for a while, uh-huh. but I am excited because we will get to see the people like in Glendale who got the VIP packages. We'll get to see them soon. I know they're going to be all over the internet. So. Yeah. I'm also excited to see the differences in the tiers of the packages. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're either going to be super excited and happy with the way that it turned out or bummed again. So, But bummed just like, it'll be fine. Playful bum. We don't really care. I just care about the tote bag. (laughs) I just like- No, literally. The only reason why I care is because of what the rep VIP boxes mm, were. That and was like, insane. Yeah. Mm. And knowing how much we paid, I'm like, okay, come on. Like, I hope we at least get something similar. Also, yeah. though, I don't think it's going to go as hard because so many people were forced to get VIP packages that it like isn't like this cool upgrade anymore. It's just like a base ticket price so I don't think they're gonna go nearly as hard oh man I thought the opposite I thought like they might go hard not for that reason though but just because this is like the long-awaited tour that we haven't had like no one has been getting VIP for the past few years there has not been anything so I hope you're right I know I know I hope Sammy's right right too (laughs) and like at the end of the day it's not even the package that I'm like upset about because I'm like oh Honestly, there are great things about the package. I'm super excited and already grateful for the fact that we have our own VIP merch section in LA. Like, I mm. don't even know if I'm going to go to the Tampa merch section. Yeah, no. Because I'm like, I, yeah, we have our own section to like not have to wait in a three hour freaking line. Right. I don't know if you guys remember, but in 1989, we don't have any merch from that concert because we got there like the last people at the concert. And then by the time we made it through the merch line, it was um, so bad. everything was sold out. The one yeah. t-shirt that I had was like an XL. And I, I remember I cut it. And like looking back now, I cut it and then I ended up donating it. So whoever in the world has my speak now <laughs> 1989 world tour t-shirt, like just please give it back. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I would have been okay with it now, but. <laughs> we have one of the one of the kitties joining us on the, the youtube version of tonight's episode um but yeah i digress okay so this one is actually pretty interesting um invitations to request to purchase tickets for the eras tour shows continue to be released periodically according to Ticketmaster. so i don't know if you guys have seen already um but the last two fridays so this friday that just passed and the friday before it'll be happening um today when this episode releases friday um shows have been going out uh like tickets to get um okay hold on i can speak requests to get tickets for the shows have been going out in order of the actual dates of the eras tour um so glendale vegas arlington tampa houston atlanta nashville and philly have already gone out i'm suspecting that if you're listening to this episode on the day it was released today friday um, the next wave should include Foxborough, East Rutherford, New Jersey, Chicago, Detroit, and maybe Pittsburgh. Like the first wave was a little smaller and the second wave included a little more shows. So I think it just depends like how much demand there is like for each show and how many tickets they have available is how many they're going to include in each wave. Um, but yeah, so waves are occurring on Fridays. Um, so if you had a presale code for any of these shows that I just mentioned, continue checking your emails throughout the day. People like if you're active on Twitter and I usually post videos about it, um, will say like that they just started receiving emails. People pretty much receive them at the same time, but I have seen people like periodically throughout the day, like somebody will get it at 9 AM and somebody will get it at 2 PM. So just kind of stay on top of that. Um, and Ticketmaster also posted an FAQ on their blog that I'll link to our socials so that you can check it out. Um, I've also been making some videos on TikTok talking about it and I've been sharing it on our Instagram. So just another reason why you guys should be following us on those. But mm-hmm. um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, they basically, you had to have been a verified fan who had a presale code and were not able to purchase tickets 
it's a little shady in the sense of like what fans with codes are getting the request yeah. or not, which again, I think just depends on the demand for the show that you were looking for tickets. Mm -hmm. So Sammy, you had a presale code for Tampa, right? Right. But you never received the email to get additional tickets. No. Okay. So like, I don't think you had boosts though. So I'm thinking that maybe mm -hmm. if you had boosts and like the, there's not a lot of availability, they're going to send to the people with boosts first and then mm -hmm. kind of make their way down the line. So I'm not sure. I like, I'm curious to see because I put in for East Rutherford, New Jersey, and mm -hmm. I had presale code and hella boosts. So I'm mm -hmm. kind of like, I don't know if there's a chance that I might actually get the email because technically I didn't get tickets for East Rutherford. Through I, the I don't think they do it like that, though. What do you mean? Like, do you think you think they do it if you didn't get tickets for the specific location? I think so, because they said you're selected and then you have a chance to change the location. But but you have tickets on your account already. That's why I'm thinking I might not, but I'm thinking there's a possibility that I could because I have seen so it happen to somebody. Okay. Somebody from one of the earlier shows mentioned that she like received the email to get tickets and she already had tickets. So mm. because I bought it through Capital One pre-sale and not the Ticketmaster pre-sale, it might it's a computer that's doing it, right? It's not one individual person sitting there saying, okay, Renee Cash. Right, but I but I think that there's an e like I think they your ticket master is linked to the tickets. So it's like Right. I mean, not that like if it happened, it might just be if you didn't get tickets to your top three locations that you put in for the pre-sale. But it also would make sense if even if you got Capital One, you still don't get it because your Ticketmaster account is linked to tickets. Right. And I hope that's the case because like for me, if that happens for me, <laughs> <laughs> if that happens for me, like in my situation, I will put in for the tickets so that I can resell them at face value and somebody else has the opportunity to get the tickets. Right. Yeah. But that's me. I don't necessarily know that the person down the street who already has tickets gets the opportunity to get yeah. tickets and is not like malicious about it. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that's not the case, but if it is the case, I'm going to use my tickets like for good. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, and that's and not a lie. That's not the case. What happened? No, that unfortunately has been the case and it will yes. continue to be so. Actually, I wanted to talk about this tonight and I think we're, we're running pretty good on time. Just I'll speed up if I have to in a little bit, please be aware of freaking ticket scammers on Facebook groups, on bots, on anything, just like my friend literally got scammed out of a lot of freaking money for joining a resale group. We've seen the group. The group looked like when you join a group, just literally give it 10 minutes to glance over. Honestly, like I could have done a better job vetting it myself and I didn't even just look through the group, look through the admins, look through the posts. This group, has anybody been watching The Last of Us? I promise I'll connect. I'll, I'll connect. <laughs> No. no okay well first of all make sure you start watching it's a good show Natasha won't watch it because it's too long but um <laughs> yes. it's a good show on HBO and it's like think post-apocalyptic world okay so this Facebook group has the bones of what used to be a normal Facebook group for trading and selling tickets and like actual people being honest and selling their tickets like normal and then this admin group of scammers came in basically shut down the group, turned off all the commenting, all of the conversation. And they said, if you want tickets to Air's tour, you have to do it through us. And that's how they're running their scam. But because it looks like, because you can see that it used to be a, a real group, it, you know, like you're like, oh, it's a normal group. People are just like selling their tickets on here. And that's how you get suckered in. Just please if you're buying tickets, make sure that you're doing it through like the right process. Only pay in PayPal goods and services. Yeah. Somewhere that you're guaranteed that you can get your money back. 
Zelle mm-hmm. is a scary thing. It's literally a cash transaction is what Zelle is. Just like beware, please, please, please beware. And that's, I think all I'm going to say on that. So please just mm-hmm. beware. And like, honestly, it's kind of funny, but if the ticket price seems too good to be true, just question it, question everything ask for proof, ask to FaceTime people. Like, I don't care if it's weird. These are tickets for a concert that literally nobody can get tickets to. Just like do everything that you have to. It's your money at the end of the day. Like Mm -hmm. more than the Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah, protect yourself. It's a concert that I'm sure, and I hope fingers crossed is going to be like rep and videotaped and like put on Netflix or something. (laughs) Like you'll be able to watch it. Please just like protect your money. That's Mm -hmm. your hard earned money. Mm-hmm. and like taylor can't help you if you have sold your soul <laughs> to an internet <laughs> scammer right. so <clears throat> the lineup for rsd 2023 has been announced and taylor swift is releasing the vinyl exclusive of folklore long pond studio sessions it's so exciting it was such a surprising like release for rsd i feel like because she did the lakes last year so i was like oh, okay like i don't know but i'm super excited for it um I'm extra excited because according to Variety there will be 115,000 copies worldwide which is about 10 times the amount of vinyls that were pressed for the 2022 RSD release of The Lakes. Mm. So I that was my first RSD ever. I'm like I'm just becoming a vinyl I think girly. explain what it is just in case. Okay, so RSD is short for Record Store Day and basically um Please excuse me if I'm wrong. Um, It's just like exclusive pressings of music from various artists throughout the world. And they release like limited editions of specific albums, music, you know. In 2018, Taylor had like a huge RSD day. She literally released like all of the albums. I think not all of them. I think it was Speak Now, Rep, and 1989 had their own special like RSD and they're freaking beautiful. The 1989 pink one. Oh man. I dream about it every day. <laughs> and like RSD wasn't as big of a thing back then, I guess. Cause a bunch of Swifties are always like, Oh yeah. Like that day I just pulled up at like two o'clock, walked Dang. in, grabbed all the, the albums. And I'm like, Oh my God. Um, <laughs> but I really do think there's going to be a big opportunity for all of us to get an RSD album this year. Um, last year I know I camped out at like 7 a.m it's not that bad and I was able to get I think the second to last copy at my record store that's insane yeah that is all the places in Charlotte were raffling the lakes because they didn't want it to be sold to like non-fans and I went to like three record stores and like got in the raffle and really thought I would win but didn't so hopefully this time (laughs) I will not be in Charlotte and go somewhere else to get it (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, maybe you can look at like just Google record stores. I know last year for my record store, I called them and I was like, hey, you're I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to call ahead and be like, are you selling? Like, I just need a yes that they're selling and then I'll camp out. Right. I just don't want it to be a raffle. Like, I can't I can't risk that. Mia actually won uh, the Lakes on a raffle last year. That's wow. her record store. Yeah, in Orlando. I wish. Wow. But I got the Lumineers last year. Oh, the- <laughs> nice which one is their song again hey that that it was hey ho hey ho (laughs) but it was the bright side album rsd have i opened it no no i haven't but the 1975 is releasing an rsd this year oh i definitely pop now that i have my record player i will definitely be copying that's exciting yeah, I'll be getting um, both of those. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Um, and then last we have the "Look What You Made Me Do" stolen versus Taylor's version debate. Mm-hmm. This all started because a show on BBC called EastEnders um, released a trailer. It's like 15 seconds, and it has a snippet of "Look What You Made Me Do" while like flashing just like the characters in the trailer. Um. And there's just like debate about whether this is Taylor's version and just like a very small snippet of it or whether it's not. Just because like when you think about it, 
why would she license a the stolen versions after like her and her team have basically said they're not going to do that anymore um it does sound really to me it sounds the same mm -hmm. but I was reading like comparisons and people who have like really really like listened to both the the like OG song and the snippet um and they said that there's subtle differences um the last like do sounds a little bit deeper and shorter than in the stolen version um and a really good point that was made is that like if it sounds identical it's because rep was the most recent mm -hmm. album that's been released so her voice is not going to change much from when rep was released to now versus like when we listen to like fearless and right. compare it to the the og one um so i just what do you guys think do you what are your thoughts okay well first we're definitely going to link the actual tweet to the video so you guys can give it a listen uh so stay tuned for that i listened to it and i heard it and i was immediately like oh okay this is the original version but that because you said like that last sentence i had thought the same thing i'm like okay but like realistically rep was seven years ago she recorded seven years ago <clears throat> Actually, she probably recorded like almost eight, started recording eight years ago, you know, like late seven, eight years around that time. And she's an older, more mature woman now versus like fearless. Her voice is not going to change as much. Yeah. So I get that. And like, that makes the most sense because the differences in her songs are not really anything, but you can just tell that she's matured and her voice is different. Right especially in a 15 second snippet that like she, her and her team probably didn't want it to be so obvious that it was Taylor's version, you know, I don't know. Yeah. And like, if you think about it logistically as well, right, we're going into Eras tour. I was thinking about this today. These are like the thoughts that I have in my car on the way home from my <laughs> workouts, but I'm like, okay, she's doing the Eras tour and she's obviously singing music from all of her stolen versions, which means that they are now all Taylor's version owned. So right. she's like, if she's giving BBC mm. this track, it's not going to be a stolen version track when she's already recorded. Look what you made me do. And there's been like, there was, I think it like back in November, Taylor had already recorded supposedly, look what you made me do. Maybe she recorded it because they were like, heads up, we kind of want to use the yeah. song. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is a good debate. We'll put a poll yeah. on our Instagram stories. Yeah, we should. We will. And actually, back sidetracking off of that a little, I wanted to share the results of our last poll. So Sama, while, while I pull that up, if you want to share your thoughts on the debate. I agree. It makes total sense that at the point we're in now, you know, we're prepping for Eris Tour. We're looking at like our full history. I mean, she's going to want to cover all grounds, you know, take back everything that was stolen and really make it her, her own even if she's you know gonna perform look what you maybe do in the concert you know it should already be like reclaimed as her own before going into it and performing it you know what I mean mm -hmm. so that snippet in the commercial might solidify that you know a she's already been recorded and b maybe we'll hear it on tour because like that's now hers again or maybe something rep you know I totally believe that this is, you know, the sign that everything is already being worked on or already has been worked on. And we're just waiting for the releases again yeah. with the teasers. We just got to be patient. Um, who knows when we're going to get it? Yeah, I'm team Taylor's version for sure. I think I'm, I was originally listening to them like team OG, but I'm going to say it makes the most sense logistically that it's Taylor's version. So I'm going to say Taylor's version. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I'm going to go with. All right. Poll results. Are we ready? It's yeah. hilarious. Okay. So uh, in our last episode, we had a poll up for debate on whether all too well, 10 minute version, um, the short film was a short film or music <laughs> video. So our debate on the pod was one or the other, but not both. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Are ready. you ready for it? Oh God. Mm -hmm. So the results are coming in at 94% short film and this is where it gets fun music video coming in at 6% with one vote 
And it's me. And it's Natasha. It's so <laughs> much. <laughs> you guys, why do you Natasha. do me like that? The fact that we talked about it before, though. <laughs> but I, I was Natasha. music video, I thought. Because I said it's it's a it's a film, but it has the whole video, the whole song. Yeah, it's a music video. I'm sorry. Oh, Tosh. Yeah, ninety four percent of the population does not agree with you. I'll accept the defeat. Thank you, listeners. <laughs> but maybe you'll win this week's poll: Taylor's version versus mm-hmm. OG on. But then we'd all win. We all agree. Just take it, Natasha. Yeah, I'll take it. I said it first, so I a win is a win. A win is a win. <laughs> <laughs> all right That's- with that we are going to take a quick break while we bring on our guest so stay tuned okay. so welcome back everybody we have ricky from the swifty sweet project with us on tonight she's going to be telling us a little bit about basically what the project is and like i mentioned earlier your opportunity to get tickets to see taylor swift if you couldn't get tickets we're just super excited to have ricky on so ricky welcome Thanks for having me. We're super excited. Um, So just a little like quick intro thing that we like to do with everybody. What's your favorite Taylor Swift era and how long have you been a Swifty and like what kind of made you be a Swifty? So I listened to your guys' podcast, um, the first episode where you guys talked about each of your favorite eras. And like, I actually talked about this in the live the other night because I was like, hey, I'm going to do a podcast, guys. Um, But so how do you define eras? Because to me, eras are Taylor Swift's eras, like who she was when she made those albums. But like, there's a, it's different than your favorite album, right? right. So like my favorite era for Taylor Swift was 1989, like her living her best life with her friends. And like, like, yeah, she got a lot of, a, a lot of crap for it. But like, like that is to me, the ultimate summer, like just having beach parties at your house, you know, in, in, in New England, like best time ever. Um, the outfits that she wore, just kind of that whole New England vibe was like everything I love in life. But my favorite album um, is and always will be folklore, I think. I love that you said that because favorite era changes every week but you bring up this like realization for me because my current favorite era is 1989 but it's not the album 1989 because I'm not going through a breakup it's 1989 because of the aesthetic that the era was yeah the colors it's the vibe it's the you know, the background beats in the album kind of thing, like not necessarily the actual songs, just like the upbeat, you know, kind of music, the pinks, the purples. That's truthfully my favorite era right now. Yeah, I think that that's like that. It's an important distinction, right? Because like this is the eras tour and it is going to go through all of her eras. And we often we we label the eras by her album. But like for me, eras describe her and like the vibe and the aesthetic that's going on at that point in time but it doesn't necessarily like like her her in the 1989 era doesn't translate to what the 1989 album was Mm -hmm. um I think the only era that truly actually does like kind of go across you know the 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 bridge there is is reputation like the era and the album are the same aesthetic yeah yeah so but I think that's the only that's truly the only like the one that kind of translates precisely to to the, from album to era. Um, and then what made me a Swifty when it becomes I'm a late in life Swifty. So I didn't really become a Swifty, I wouldn't say until 1989. That was the okay. first concert I went to. But previous to that, like I had I, I I knew her, you know, her her hits, I knew her singles. Um, I enjoyed her, but I wasn't really invested until mm-hmm. 1989. Um, and I, I think a lot of that is that like I'm an elder Swifty. So when she was, you know, doing a uh, debut and, 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 um, and her other albums you know, written fearless, like I wasn't in a stage where I could like relate to that music heavily. Um, so like, I didn't, I didn't grow up with Taylor. Taylor grew into me. Um, mm-hmm. it's kind of how I like to say it. Like her music became more relatable as she, as she got more mature, but I will say going back and listening to debut read fearless, like, 
I I relate now. Like I, mm -hmm. I just didn't know that the whole albums existed. So but I became a fan in 1989 and shortly after really is when everything blew up with her owning her masters. And so I was like, <laughs> I'm not going back and buying CDs until she releases right. it. So I do not own any of the non-Taylor version CDs. I own a couple like singles that I purchased yeah. way before, but like I won't buy those albums. So I haven't listened to debut in its entirety. Oh, um, wow. I haven't listened to um, uh, um, Speak Now in its entirety. So no um, st stolen versions over here. Nope. Yeah. And I will like, I, you know, enjoy the music you enjoy. And if you, if you listen to something, if you own it, like listen to it, like that doesn't bother me, but I'm kind of like solidarity sister. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. really want to make sure that like, I try to give her her credit where it's due. And like, since I don't own the albums, I'm not going to go back and purchase them now. It'll That'll be, very, be amazing very though, to listen to the re-recordings and like, not only it's like a new version, but it's all, it might be like a new song to you, which is like right. even better. Like that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. And you get I mean, it live in your own concert in a way. Like you get to well, now live everything that was happening before in the concerts, you know? The first time I heard All Too Well was at Reputation Tour. That was the first time I had ever heard All Too Well. I was like, I need this song in my life immediately. And I still did not go buy it. <laughs> like, I was like, I'll wait. But you best believe when Red TV was 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 released, I was I was in Sad Girl Autumn and I was here for it. And it was yes. everything I wanted it to be. Yeah. This I is love... a little bit off topic, but since we're talking about All Too Well, do you think she's going to play the 10 minute version mm -hmm. at the Eras Tour? So she has said that the 10 minute version is the only version now. So I think that we're getting all too well 10 minute version at Air okay. Like Do you we think have we'll get the full 10 minutes? Because we talked about maybe that it might be like a cut up version of the 10 minute version, like with the new 10 minute version parts, but not the entire song because 10 minutes is a really long time. Especially I for mean, Air's tour. Not when you're listening to it, it's not. It feels like it flies by. Like, it's just one of those things that, like, I, I truly, like, my heart of hearts, I hope she does. Um, I, I, I'm here for that 10 minutes. I, I will be there. The only thing, I, I like, I, I made a video about this, and I was like, essentially, the only thing I disagree with is that, truly, you know, she's more mature. She's dropping F-bombs left and right. I'm here for it. I, I, I love a little, like, just, this is how you really wrote it. I know that's how you wrote it. But, like, her saying, um... Uh, you, you call me up again just to break me up, like promise. Uh, shoot, I can't think of the lyric. But basically, there's a point where she says, um, oh, maybe this maybe this stream is a masterpiece till you tore it all up. Fucked it all up fits so much better. Mm -hmm. And just would have been in the, te only in the 10 minute version. She could have done yeah. the re-record just all too well, fine. But like, I will be singing my version of maybe <laughs> Piece, till you fucked it all up until the end of time because that the F-bomb belongs. It, it would be well-placed. <laughs> Ricky's version I love it <laughs> now that you say that I don't think I'll ever listen to it again the same way because I was like absolutely like that belongs there yeah it, it 100% belongs there and it would have been well placed in in the 10 minute version because it would have been really a good opportunity for her to be like like this is the this is the we already said fuck in the song once like I know <laughs> I, in my heart of hearts I know that's how she wrote it his version like you said that's what that's what I'm saying for. I love it same oh I think it's finally time if you just want to share basically everything about the Swifty Sweet project <laughs> Lord the amount of times I've had to say in my life I have a sweet to see Taylor Swift like is just like it's because I start all of my videos that way but basically what happened was me and my six friends um all all pre-registered all did everything right to try to get tickets and none of us got got the verified fan fine. We were going to ride my husband's Capital One card for Capital One presale. I gave everybody the card. We all logged into our accounts. None of us could get tickets. We, it, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's tale as old as time at this point. Yeah. Like everybody had the same experience unless you got tickets that day, in which case, how does it feel to be one of God's favorites? Um, <laughs> like, so I was, I was crushed and I was like, okay, we we're going to wait and we're, we're going to go we're, like, I'm in New York. I'm at a work conference. I like, I'm like, I don't even have like Friday. I'm not, I'm not available, but I'm going to make it work. Um, so we'll figure it out. We'll, 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 we'll just go with general sale. And then general sale got canceled. Come on Friday and was kind of like, it was obviously a very bad night. And I woke up the next morning and I was like, this, like this week could not be any sadder. <laughs> and then I started thinking, and I was like, you know what? 
Um, so I, for background, I work in the conventions industry. So I, I work in meeting planning, I work in events. So I've been hosted in suites several times by hotels and conventions mm -hmm. and visitors bureaus for concerts. And I'm like, you know what? They are not, they're not holding all those suites for corporate. Like they can't. So I'm like, let me just pop on and see. I'm from Chicago. Let's see what Soldier Field says. And so this is Saturday morning, the day after pre-sale or general sales supposed to happen. Uh -huh. And Chicago had a wait list. And I was like, all right, I'll sign up for this wait list. And so then I called a couple of my friends that, you know, the people that, that I, I went into battle with. And I was like, here's my plan. We are going to get a suite and we are just going to divide the number. And then I'm going to sell the extra tickets for face value, like for what it's worth. And like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. And then I'm like, you know what, just to be safe, I'm going to go look up every other Midwest stadium <laughs> and sign up for their suites. And so I did that that weekend. And the first one to get back to me was Detroit. And they were like, hey, it's going to be a couple of weeks, but we are doing general sale for suites. And and kind of, I, I developed a relationship with Kyle. Um, I joke around that Kyle's my boyfriend. Kyle's the breeze in my hair on the weekends. <laughs> me and Kyle vibe like that. Um, at, at Ford Field. And he was like, yeah, we have suites. And I started thinking about it a little bit more after I knew that I was going to get the suite of like, okay, what can I like, like, now we're looking at over like $1,300 a person. And it makes me sick to my stomach that music has become, and live music especially, has become so inaccessible to people. Mm -hmm. And that in order to see your favorite artist, who you've been there for since the beginning, for most in most cases, you're just priced out at a certain point. And so I was like, how can I translate this into something good? Basically, I had to like talk to legal and like figure out how to do it for my business and figure out how to like have a product attached to it. So it's actually promoting something. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, go through all of this like legalese and when it all was said and done Kyle got back to me and was like you have a suite here's the number of seats you have so it turned out I was gonna and I got to I got to buy a couple extra seats so I was like 22 that's how many seats I want for project one and I launched it on TikTok and it was very successful so basically people bought prints um, and, and promoted small businesses. The small businesses uh, also donated, well, didn't donate, we bought sweatshirts basically from them to include in, in the sweepstakes. And then it kind of grew from there. And then as it was coming to a close, everyone was like, do it again, do it again. And I was like, I'm not, guys, come on. <sighs> like, like, please, this was I just finished. <laughs> <laughs> Your girl is tired. Um, and so basically um, somebody reached out. So like this kind of answers a question of like how did 2.0 start? was somebody reached out and was like, hey, if I do the groundwork and find you, you know, something that works, would you do it? Because at that point in time, I was starting a new job and I was doing like doing all these things. And I was like, yeah, like in, in theory, hypothetically, which is an ongoing joke on my page, I would say hypothetically, if we're going to do this again, um, <laughs> hypothetically, yes, I would do this again. They were like LA. And I was like, that's actually doable. I called an emergency <laughs> town meeting. And yeah. I was like, Guys, what do we want to do here? hypothetically, if you're going to do this again, would you rather have two suites on like closing day, which is a weekday, which I know is not convenient for everybody. Or would you rather less seats on a weekend? And everyone was like, no, we don't care the day. Closing night would be epic. Do it. So I have two suites to see Taylor Swift for the closing night of Aero's show at so SoFi Stadium on Wednesday, August 9th. And I'm doing the sweepstakes for the 34 extra tickets I have, along with two nights hotel, transportation from the hotel to the concert and back and food and beverage included in the suite. Um, and then we also have a bunch of more prizes, which we'll, we'll kind of go through in a little bit. But that is my, my spiel that I've said so many times. I dream it in my sleep. <laughs> um, and the reason we, we, I included hotel and transportation, and all those things is because I knew that people were going to have to travel. And when you add all that up, it, it again, prices people out. So even yeah. though you're, you're purchasing a print for 22 or $33, you like, once you start adding in flight and ground transportation and hotel, you're now asking people to spend thousands of dollars again. And so I was like, how can I, again, make this as reasonable as possible and make some Swifty dreams come true for people that maybe couldn't even afford a ticket on their own yeah. um, and make it so that it's, it's palatable and they're going to have the time of their lives and we're coming together to make it happen. So that's, that's how it started. Amazing. I love it. I'm so glad you like made it accessible to Swifties because I can just imagine also like the heartbreak or like what a Swiftie would go through if let's say they win the sweepstakes, but they can't afford to get there. 
And, and like, that was, yeah. what do you do then? So like you really like thought through every potential obstacle and found a way to get the Swifty to the concert, which is what, well, it's, what it's, matters. It's a hazard of the trade of like, of doing, you know, events that like you have, you think through really everything, right? right? It was, it was more so like, I come from a single mom household too. Like she sacrificed a lot, you know, to get us to see live music. And I remember her struggling to get me, I'm dating myself so much right now, but um tell lawn seat ticket to the spice girls and like that being like the biggest deal ever of like I get to go and like I knew how hard my mom worked for that ticket shouldn't be this way you shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to be rich to go see live music it should yeah. not work that way and you get priced out constantly and it's not yeah. it sucks it's not yeah. fair and I know that you know I, I love Taylor but like you know capitalism capitalizes and that's you know what it's going to do and so at a certain point it it is going to happen over and over again so if we can we can coordinate fan projects to help alleviate that let's do it mm -hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up about being priced out of as a fan we've definitely started having those conversations more as we have you know more merch drops more rem remixes drop you know at at prices to pay and it it sucks to see that you know being a fan comes at a cost at some point and we can love and idolize someone but at the same time we can also you know check them and 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 hold them accountable for for what they're doing and a lot of people spend so much money and it's crazy to me that I remember before tour dates were released but when we had the information for it, there was a merch drop I think it was around the holidays and, and the items were expensive and I remember people on Twitter were like guys try not to spend so much money like remember tours right around the corner like save your money and it's crazy that you have to think like that and it has to be a conversation amongst us like like, hey know how to use your money because it's going to be a lot the price is going to be so big but you can also find small businesses to create custom items for you that will far and above be exactly what you were envisioning in your head with mm -hmm. merch. Like I've I've made so many um so many sweatshirts and things like that, like or or like just cute little items for my friends, just by reaching out to an Etsy store and saying, Hey, I want this. This is what I have in my head. Can you make it come to life? And they absolutely will. And you're helping a small business, which is mm -hmm. another huge important part of this project. So for first round, um, I worked with with Lust and Laura. They did the prints for me, and then the sweatshirts, and then a, a couple a couple other um, you know people reached out. And was like, hey, I want to donate something, and so we added stuff in. And this round, it's been a lot of people. So we're we're going to have over fifty additional prizes, wow. and this isn't prizes like. Oh, a keychain. This is like the the lowest price point for an item that you're going to get is thirty dollars, and that's for original artwork. Wow. Um, and and it's it's beautiful artwork. So we have sweatshirts. We have um these countdown boxes that are worth over a hundred dollars or have a hundred dollars worth of merchandise in them. Um, we have um. Uh, basically like these tumblers that are I, they're exclusive they they did a short release on their on their page but they say real fucking legacy on them and they have the eras tour emblem and they're gorgeous um and just lots of really cool stuff so i'm going to run through a list of all the contributors if you don't mind um and if you were there for the first drawing i can read fast so <laughs> shop less and more rumor henry on tiktok the elephant teacher on instagram shop wide-eyed gaze vocal millennial cornelian maine shop ryan james Ray's crochet evergreen embroidery designer dust Co, the Archer's Thread, Ray Sunshine Design, and Rustic Records have all contributed prizes to round two. So um, amazing community. They are all small businesses or literally just Swifties. Rumor Henry, who did this shirt, is just a Swiftie. And I'm trying to talk her into like opening a shop um, to sell these. <laughs> but like Please literally do. the want, outreach. Yeah, the outreach from the community has been amazing. And people just see the beauty of the project. And now I feel like that they know me and know that like, I did this, like, I was like, I will be 100% transparent throughout this whole project to the point where we read every single entry number as we put it into the into the drum um, to make sure that if you watched it, you heard your number called and people knew that like their entry was in there. So it was really important to be to be transparent. And I feel like that's the only way you can get people to trust you. I follow every single person back on TikTok so that they have access to me and they can't be like, well, I can't get a hold of her. Um, so, and that's, I mean, it, I wanted to be transparent. I wanted to build a community and I think I've kind of achieved that. So.
I actually started this, my Swifty Sweet Project account. Like I have a whole other account on TikTok. I started it because I was like, I want a place where people like don't have to wade through stuff to get to like Swift conversations mm -hmm. and like can, you know, get to know me on this level. But mm -hmm. Like they're now trying to talk me into like doing like, like making this a career. Like there are ideas floating around trademark, copyright, you can't steal it. I said it um, for a Swifty summer camp for uh, a Swifties at sea. Like we are like, they're like, Ricky, just do all of these things. And I was like, guys, I have a full-time job. <laughs> so that, like literally we sat on a live the other night and talked about it and like talked about the act color wars and like decorating each cabin like a different era and like oh, doing yeah. like a you know a swifty dance party every night um having like different contests and i listened to your like and we had this conversation before but like a lip sync battle like all of these things like that i was like this is like i would go i would 100 percent go we, we would be there in a heartbeat so mm -hmm. we like, would. and like it's an opportunity not just to like meet new swifties but like like think about like oh no i can't go i have swifty summer camp that weekend like how <laughs> amazing would that be like to say like um so i'm actually looking into that for next summer to see if like we can do something really like amazing and epic like that and if it works, kind of maybe continuing and doing in other places, yeah. working with different places to, to make it happen. So um, the Swifty community will talk you into crazy things is, is really <laughs> the lesson that everyone should take away from this. Honestly, sign me up already. You can have our names right. at the top of the I, like I have no doubt, like, and I was actually talking to, we lovingly call my husband, Mr. Ricky. Um, I was talking to Mr. Ricky the other day and I was like, hey, the Swifties are at it again. They're trying to talk to you into something. He's like, he's like, that actually doesn't sound like a bad business model. Like, like if people did it, like, so say you did five, you know, five a year and like people from different areas came like once a year, like that's, and I was like, well then, and then winter time we, we could do Swifties at sea and do like a cruise. And he's like, well, that would be amazing. And I'm like, okay, so like Mr. Ricky is now like he will not. He's on board. Him, but he is, <laughs> he is becoming a Swifty. Um, so I think that like, I definitely will, I will look into it. I will yeah. see if I can make it happen. The Swifty community has been great. I didn't have like, TikTok is the only place I really, you know, have, have landed in terms of social media. TikTok really does, it, it, it does an excellent job of, of, of really connecting you with the community immediately um, and kind of placing you there and like you being able to interact and find people that you, you really gravitate towards. So I think, um, it, you know, a lot of bad comes out of TikTok. Um, a lot of bad comes out of Swift Talk sometimes, but I will say in creating community, there's nothing like it. Um, and the Swift Talk community is is great and fierce, and I love them. Yeah, I think if any fan base would be involved and invested in all those ideas you're saying, it's Swifties. So like, I I'm I'm all I'm all about it. I'm excited. We do a great job of making Taylor Swift our whole personality. <laughs> oh my god, that's why I said it's hard for me to find friends because that is my entire personality. <laughs> <laughs> well, and my friends that are not Swifties are like, we like we knew you liked Taylor Swift, but we didn't know that you were this into Taylor Swift. And I was like, but like, I don't think I was. I think it progressed over time. Like, like <laughs> I'm not coming back. Um, and it's okay. I'm I'm happy here. Let me let me let me go. Let me just stay here. <laughs> For our listeners, you know, how can they participate in the sweepstakes? Are there any restrictions, just like some FAQs kind of things that they need to know if they want to participate? And a, another big question is, um, if you already have tickets to the Eras Tour, can you participate in the sweepstakes? Like, who's it open to? Absolutely. So um, you can go to the website. In, it's in my TikTok bio, but I'll give it, give it here in case you're not on TikTok. It's swiftysweetproject.com, and that's Swifty with IE. Um, so you can go to that. I always tell people, please read through the entire website. Nobody does, but I tell them, please read through the, through the entire website. There is an FAQ button um, that will answer most questions, but um, basically it kind of answers uh, the question of, can I answer if I already have tickets? Um, I say yes. I mean, that's at your discretion. People might 
might want tickets for another area that's another location that's better for them and then be able to sell their tickets or want the better, you know, for, for SoFi, they're floor suites. So they're called field cabanas and they're on the floor and set back a little bit. So you'll be able to see over everyone on floor. So um, they might want those seats instead of the seats that they have. And so I would never restrict people. Um, uh, and then they might, it, hopefully that they would sell their tickets for face value to another Swifty, you know, if, if that was the case, because it's all about giving back here and keeping community. Um, so yes, I, I just ask if you already have tickets, maybe wait a little bit. We're about a week out from starting from launching 2.0. So maybe get it to like midweek next week, which would be like, you know, the end of the end of February. And then if there's, you know, entries available, please enter. Um, there are single and double entries. If you read the website, it explains it pretty well, <laughs> but basically if a single entry gets pulled, it's one ticket. If a double entry gets pulled, it's two tickets. So I wanted to make sure that people that, um, some people just want to travel and go see Taylor Swift and make new friends and that's cool. And some people need their emotional support Swifty. And I completely understand that. So um, I gave two ticket categories. You cannot get more than that from one poll. So like if you put in two double entries, you can, you know, there's a possibility of your, of both of those entries getting picked. And then you would have four tickets. If you do not need those tickets, I would hope that you would come back and be like, Hey, pull for another ticket. I don't need four. I only need three. Um, but the only rule that I have is you absolutely in no way, shape or form can sell the tickets, not for face value, not for, not for a markup. Um, if you, if you, uh, entered for, for the tickets and you get pulled, you must be one of the people that takes that ticket. Mm -hmm. Um, that being said, there's also in the form, you can either select draw again if you just want to contribute to the project and, you know, make the odds better for other people, but don't need a ticket. Um, there is a form at the end where you can say draw again and I would draw another entry. You get put back in for any of the additional prizes. Um, and then there's also entering on behalf of. So entering on behalf of means essentially, um, we'll just say Ren is my best friend and I want her to be able to go see, she's in LA and I want her to be able to go see Taylor Swift and I want to surprise her so I would purchase a print and then I would put entering on behalf of Ren and then a way for me to get a hold of Ren I would always contact the person that gets pulled first and be like hey your your entry got pulled um I will you know I'll give you if you want to surprise them let me know let me know when it's okay for me to email them that they with the information um and then uh, in terms of age restrictions, so you have to be 18 to enter. Those are stoop safe laws in the country. There's nothing I can do about it. You have to be a resident of the US or Canada. Um, and then if you are, um, if you want to bring a minor, you absolutely can. If you, the person that enters is over 18 and they want to bring a minor, they can. The rule is, is that that person has to be a parent, guardian, or uh, somebody that's put in charge of the care of said minor. So basically um, we'll say like an aunt wants to bring their niece. I would basically have to get a notarized document saying that the parents are putting that aunt in charge of it. Um, and all of that is for legal reasons. Like if something happens at the concert and you know, it's somebody lied and said it was their niece and it turned out to be, you know, their friend. Um, I would want to make sure that I'm I'm legally protected. Um, so it's, you know, it kind of offers an opportunity for people from a broad spectrum, even if you are under uh, under the age of 18, but you want to go, you can, you know, come with, you know, an adult that's in charge of you. You're the cool aunt, you know, if you will. <laughs> um, so, but, you know, it, it, I can't, I can't have, um, you know, people under, under minors pretty much running around if something happened to them, then it would be my yeah. fault. And I, you know, I, I can't risk that. For sure. Um, and then, you know, there's, if you go to the FAQs on the page, I was pretty, I, I felt like I was pretty comprehensive on it, but it gives, it gives all the information on, um, you know, if you have tickets to another show, if you, if you've already won, there are people that have won the Detroit sweepstakes that entered for LA because they're from Washington. Um, and they're like, I, you know, it also if somebody wins and wants to trade with a Detroit person, I have a couple of people that would, would, would prefer LA only because of logistics. I'm happy to have that happen. Um, and people have reached out before, you know, the drawing and said, Hey, I, you know, I, I'm a mom. I entered on behalf of my daughter. I don't think I put it in, on the form though. And like, I'm happy to update stuff in those terms. I just have to know beforehand. Um, and the reason that I did that is because I don't want to stand up in the, in the hands of scalpers. Um, and people to, you know, buy in for, you know, $500 worth of tickets yeah. and then worth of entries. And then I pull them and they turn around and sell the, sell the seats for, you know, $5,000, which, you know, I wouldn't put it past them at this point. We've all seen the horrible people that they are. Um, and then the other question I get most often is, can you win more than once? Um, and I kind of, I kind of address that, but you absolutely can. I just would hope that people would be, um, respectful of the, of the spirit of the project and that, 
we're really trying to get as many people to to the concert as possible. So if you only needed two or three tickets, um, you know, give it back. Let me draw again. So that's awesome. Um, and how do you announce the winner? Like what what's the process there? Oh, Lord, it is it is a long process. So um, basically, once all the prints are gone, I will announce the drawing date. Um, and I basically um, give myself a a good week, week and a half. And with that time, I email every single person entered with a unique ID number, mm -hmm. um, the category of entry, the, if they entered on behalf of somebody else, if they, um, you know, if they, if they select a draw again and give them a couple day window to reach back and say, this was right or this was wrong. So I'm human and sometimes in trans transitioning things and, and kind of pulling it over, um, some things get kind of screwy. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody saw their entry before it went in and that they were hundred percent confident. <laughs> and then basically I go on live on TikTok and I, me and, and and my family, as I call them, my cousin and my sister-in-law, read through every single um, uh, entry form. We read all the ID numbers. And so there are, um, it is capped. I cap for round one and I'll, I'll kind of go through with the cap for round two, but it's capped at a, a number of entries, but it's still for round one, I think it was 1,950 entries. Oh um, and so we read all those numbers, put them in the drum on live so people could see that everything was going in, that the drum was empty beforehand. And then we just drew winners and, and wrote them on a whiteboard. Um, and then afterwards I emailed all the winners. <laughs> so you don't have to be present for, for the drawing to, to, uh, to get notified. You will get an email afterwards um, and I will follow up. Up. And if you don't answer me, I will, I will stalk you. Um, we had somebody that I announced the winners, I emailed, and she was like the one person that didn't confirm that like, yes, I verified this. And so I literally like went and like text them. And I'm like, I am so sorry. What is <laughs> like, your name? Um, and she's like, yeah, who is this? And I was like, um, so this is Ricky from SoTC Project. I'm sorry to bother you, but you won tickets. Do you know that you won tickets? She's like, I, I was in the live. Yes. I knew she's like, I didn't see your email. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no big deal. And I've talked to all the winners. They are incredible people. And I've seen some videos of, of, of the winners when they won. And it was touching. Um, one person was actually standing in the airport when they when they saw the drawing and like literally like screamed at the oh. bench and was like they're like I didn't get a video but here's a picture of me FaceTiming my best friend and telling her we won and like the oh. picture like I want to get it framed and put on my wall because it's just such a like the friend is like you can see just see movement in the corner picture and like <laughs> it just the mouth agape is like I'm like like and it's not even like I did that like we as a Swifty community did that like this is I say it often like I'm just a girl with a crazy idea and the high credit limit everybody that participated <laughs> mm -hmm. is is contributing to this this project so right. just some final thoughts you know how can our listeners get in touch with you what's something that you want them to know so I would say um, you can get in touch with me on TikTok. I do also have an Instagram and a, and a Twitter. Um, I think my Instagram and Twitter are private, but I have them so people can reach out to me. All of them are Swifty Sweet Project. So Swifty, i.e. Sweet Project. Um, and also I have an, an email account that is exclusively dedicated to this. So Swifty Sweet Project at gmail.com. Um, and I'm, I mean, stupid responsive. Like I like eat, sleep and breathe this. You can reach me on any of those platforms. Um, and TikTok is really the only um, place that I'm active because it really truly is. I feel like the only place that you can, you know, see what people interact with as much as they do and kind of like build that community. And then also, you know, the, the comments afterwards of people, like I, I like cry, I cry constantly on my lives because I, I'm super emo about this project. Um, but like, like people being like, you know, I'm gutted. Like this is my last shot. I'm like, I, if, if I could give everyone a ticket, I would, I it would be everything I, I like, it's my goal in life to get as many people as there as possible. Um, and it, it, it sucks to break hearts, but it's also like, I'm doing everything I can. And I'll give one more plug. There is, you know, everyone knows about the Eros resor uh, resale page on Twitter. Um, Eros tour resale, I believe it's called. Um, they, you know, try to connect Swifties with people that are selling for face value. They verify everything. And there's also a creator, Hannah Mae Lois <clears throat> on TikTok that goes live every night, um, connecting face value sellers with people that are looking for tickets. And they've connected over like 218 people, I think at this point. Wow. Um, so there are people out there that are dedicating time and energy and doing the most to get, you know, as many people to tour as possible.
Thank you guys so much. This has been such a fun conversation. Thank you for chatting with us. And thank you for creating a safe space for giving Swifties another chance to, you know, possibly participate and, and see Taylor in all this chaos that's happening. You're, you know, really going above and beyond to, to make it happen in the best way possible. I'll say it again. It is, I am just the girl with the crazy idea and the, the high credit limit. This, this, this project and the success of round one and the soon to be success of round two is 1000% a Swifty community effort. It is all Swifties coming together and working together and being happy for the people that win. Um, and also the, the small businesses who are like, Hey, I, I don't have much, but here, here's, here's some of my merch to like, help you get prizes to people. Um, because I think a lot of people saw how like down I was for like a week afterwards or like, I'm like, I know some people are sad and I'm so sorry. But like, it was another opportunity part, that you gave. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. For the most part, everybody was really, really encouraging. And, you know, I think again, it's, it's, we're going to do meetups at each place. So I'm hoping that people come out and meet up with us, whether they, you know, are going to that show or not. Um, we'll, we'll, we're going to come up with a cool name for Detroit, um, but it's definitely going to be a cool summer beach beach party. I um, yeah, it's going to be great. So um, I can't wait. And I can't wait to get the drawing for, for round two, but I just hope that it lasts a little bit longer this, this round so that people have a chance to enter. Yeah. Well, thank you for your vision. Thank you for your good intentions. And thank you for joining us on the pod. It was for so fun insane. talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, bye, ladies. You have a wonderful night. Thank you. You too. You too. Thank you. Um, that was like a super fun episode, honestly. Thanks, Ricky, when you're listening back for joining us on the pod. It was amazing having her on today. I'm super excited for the opportunity that she's even giving Swifties to get yeah freaking tickets to the Eras tour. So I love that. Um, but with that, moving forward, our next episode is going to be a super exciting episode because it will be exactly one week until tour starts. So we're going to be going over, you know, stay tuned. We're going to be going over the tips, tricks, things you need to know to get ready for the Eras tour. Maybe it's your first Taylor Swift concert. Maybe it's been five years since you've seen Taylor Swift and you don't know what to expect anymore. We're here to help you out. Um, we are so excited to announce that the T-Swift sisters have partnered with Ricky and her Swifty Sweet project. And we have purchased a double entry to her sweepstakes um, for you and a friend to see Taylor Swift at the Eras Tour on August 9th, 2023 at SoFi Stadium. Um, so this ticket entry will be on behalf of one of our followers who, are, um, who will enter our contest. Um, stay tuned tomorrow on our Instagram, um, February 25th. We will go ahead and post um, the contest and all the rules so that you can go ahead and enter. So make sure you're following us on social on Instagram at T Swift Sisters Pod, where we'll be sharing the contest information on TikTok and Twitter at T Swift Sisters. Follow us on YouTube if you watch the um, if you want to watch the video version of our show or on podcasts, wherever you listen. If you're following us on um, YouTube, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to us on podcast only, please, please, please follow us our page so that you can get notified when new episodes release. And we will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.